Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are starting the Repeats Redux tutorial series. Uh, before I do that, just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, please sign up for the uh, mailing list or subscribe to the YouTube channel. That would be most appreciated. Uh, but today we're going to start looking at the repeat tool fin in Finale, which is honestly not one of my favorite tools, and um, you'll see why as we get further on in the lessons. Um, but the repeat tool is the one that looks like you know, a backwards repeat bar line here in the toolbar next to the cleft tool. And uh, there's some very simple things that we can do with the repeat tool, and 99% of the time, those simple things is probably all you'll ever need to do. Uh, so I'm going to show you those first, and then you can probably uh, say goodbye and go on to the next series if you really want. Uh, but stick around if you really need to do any kind of manipulation of these repeats, because it does get a little bit complicated. Um, so the simple way to use the repeat tool is to just select the measure and just right click to pull up the contextual menu. This is like, you know, the, the really simple way to do this. And actually there's something called create simple repeat. And if you select that, you get a repeat. And it does. if you select more measures, you'll repeat all of those measures. That's exactly sort of how that works. Now we can do the same thing, just select a bunch of measures and from the repeat menu, we have those options here as well. So just create simple repeat, um, create simple a simple repeat there. And we don't even need to be in the repeat tool. We can be in the selection tool and right click when you have a selection like this. And there is a repeat section towards the bottom with those same options here, including create simple repeat. And voila, that's really all there is to it. Um, it doesn't get much more complicated than that. And Finale will play back this correctly by um, you know, repeating bars three through seven. Um, there are some other options in that contextual menu that I just want to show you. Uh, I'm in the selection tool, so the repeats menu is all the way down here. We have create first and second ending, and the way this works is that whichever measure you have selected, that is the bar or bars that go under the first ending. So that's how this uh, little uh, tool works here. You select that, and you can see that the selected measure goes under the first ending, and the second ending gets put after it. Right? You can select two measures here and do the same thing. Uh, first and second ending, and you'll see it work just like that, okay? Go back to the repeat tool here. There's a couple other uh, things here in this contextual menu. Uh, there's a create ending, uh, which you can select, and this will pull up the create ending um, assignment dialog box, uh, or definition dialog box, I guess, which um, I'm going to get into in much more depth in the next lesson, but um, normally we'll just set it up as a, you know, a single ending with a backwards repeat bar so you get something like that without the second ending. Um, the other couple things you can do here is cre just create a single forward repeat bar line or create a single backwards repeat bar line. So uh, sometimes that's handy if your repeated section is kind of long. So you know if you need a repeat at the very beginning you just choose the forward repeat bar and then kind of scroll all the way over 100, 200 measures, whatever you need to do and then choose the backwards repeat bar. You know, instead of trying to select the whole passage, that's another way to do that. All right, so literally that's how you do repeats. Um, w uh, again, with the contextual menu, it's really the easiest way to do it. It's all those those options also exist in the repeat menu up here. Um, and uh, <laughs> really, if that's all you need, then um, I'll see you on the next series. But uh, stick around because there's there's a lot more to this. Um, you know, the repeat tool is sort of one of its main function is, is to help Finale deal with the playback uh, roadmap. So a lot of the functionality of the repeat tool has to do with that, um, in addition to some of the graphical and textual uh, necessities of, you know, endings and text repeats and all that, that sort of thing. So um, before I get too much further, this is sort of a basic video. I just kind of want to give you another little... Um, you know, primer to what's going on with the rest of these repeats videos. So uh, with the repeat tool chosen here, what I'm going to do is pull up the main repeat selection dialog box, which is this thing right here. And in order to get here, there's a couple ways. Just select a measure and double click, and you'll see the repeat selection dialog box. Um, the other way to get here is just uh, select the measure and press return. You get the repeat selection dialog box. 
And then also from the contextual menu, or from the, uh, sorry, from the selection tool, the contextual menu, the repeat section, we have this option here called repeat selection. <laughs> now, don't get confused by this because I uh, sometimes get confused with repeat selection. You're saying, Finale, I would like to repeat the selection that I've just made, but that's not <laughs> actually what this is doing. It's the repeat selection dialog box, which is this that you're pulling up there, right? There's a difference between that and the create simple repeat, which is probably what you <laughs> meant to do in the first place. But so let me just uh, get a little bit into that so we can kind of you know start out with some basic concepts of how this works. So again, select the measure in the repeat tool and press return. You get the repeat selection dialog box. And there's sort of two sides to this or two halves. There's the graphic repeats on the top and there's the text repeats, which we'll get to much later uh, in this series. And you can choose either. You can choose one of these text repeats, or you can go up here and choose one of these graphic repeats. Now, just choosing the forward repeat here and pressing select is basically doing what we did before, just creating a forward repeat uh, bar line, which is exactly what you would expect. right? So press return again to get into this repeat selection, and we can choose the back repeat bar. Now, with the when you choose the back repeat from the repeat selection tool and press select, it's going to automatically bring up the backward repeat bar assignment for measure four in this case, right? And there's a few things in here that I want to talk about because this is going to help conceptually with the repeats lessons. Once you kind of get a, a grasp on this, you'll sort of start to understand the rest of it a little bit easier. Um, and the bottom half is sort of uh, grayed out right now because we're dealing with a simple backwards repeat bar line. So things like um, you know, the text repeat showing on different staffs is sort of irrelevant and also allowing individual el uh, edits is irrelevant for just a simple backwards repeat bar line. But the repeat action and the target is relevant to this repeat bar line. Now with it set up just like this, it's set to play section twice with the target, the repeat action is to play it twice. The target is to go to the nearest forward repeat uh, bar line, which is this, this guy right here. So if we click OK, we're just basically creating a, another simple repeat, just like that. Again, we could have done the same thing. Create simple repeat does the exact same thing. Now, once you have these repeat uh, bar lines here, we can always get back to that assignment dialog box with the backwards repeat bar by double clicking that. And you'll see that we get the, uh, the same exact box. Incidentally, you can't do that with a left repeat bar line. I'm double clicking here and nothing is happening. Um, because in Finale, a left repeat bar line is basically a, a marker. There's no uh, definition to it. There's no jumping involved. There's no action to be taken with a left repeat bar, so you can't actually do anything. In fact, if you right-click the handle, the only options you have are help and delete. Um, if you right-click the backwards repeat, however, we get the other options, uh, and the one that's kind of relevant with this is the edit repeat assignment which again brings you that backward repeat bar assignment dialog box, which we were just talking about. So um, again, just conceptually, that forward repeat bar is just sort of a graphical marker. It's the backward repeat bar that contains all of the uh, sort of actionable things that can happen with this repeat. And uh, so let's just talk about this top uh, set of options here, because this is, gonna, again, this is going to be important to pretty much any type of repeat uh, in, the, in the repeat tool. So basically, we have the repeat action, which is telling Finale, what do you want me to do when I get to this bar line? And then the target, where do you want me to go uh, with this action? And uh, in this case, the, the way it's normally set up is just play section two times, target nearest forward repeat. That makes total sense. That's how it should be. But there are some other options, including the jump on pass. Now, this is going to be a little bit more useful for things like um, DSL codas where you have a two coda marking. Um, now that two coda marking, you're not going to want to jump on the first time through. You're going to want to jump when it goes back the second time. So for that instance, you would have a jump on pass two, right? For a ba simple backwards repeat, this is really not um, all that logical, so you really wouldn't use that. Um, but the play section two times for a backwards repeat is what you would want to. Now, if you wanted to repeat this more than two times, you can do that. You select three or four, and uh, it will repeat that four times. In fact, if I do that, you can just see when I play this back. Two, three, four. All right, so we can actually set Finale to... Stop, thank you. We can set Finale to uh, play back as many times as we, uh, as we want. Now, there is this option here to reset on repeat action. 
So what's um, interesting is that Finale, uh, by default, will respect the rule of music um, regarding repeats when you go back, when you use like DS or DC Alcoda uh, segments. So in this case, this uh, simple repeat, if I had a DS Alcoda or a DC Alcoda uh, later on and it jumped back to the beginning of the piece and then went through, when it got to bar four, the normal musical um, uh, interpretation is to not take the repeats the second time through on the DC, right? So without this reset on repeat action checked, which is it's how it is by default, it's not checked, um, Finale will ignore this repeat the second time through. If we tell Finale to reset the repeat action um, when it's done, basically what that's saying is that when you hit the DC and then come back and then hit this uh, repeat bar line, it will take that repeat because it just repeated the, uh, it reset the repeat action for this, right? So uh, it's a little bit um, semantic, but that's exactly what's going on. Now you could have, you could want to have this check, for example, if on your DC Alcoda, you had a, a, a note that said DC Alcoda take all repeats. Um, in that case, you definitely want to have the reset on repeat action um, because this, the, ne the next time you get through it, it will allow this to actually repeat again. So that's um, giving you a little bit of flexibility. And interestingly, the reset on repeat action, it looks like it's under the jump on pass, but it actually applies to um, either of these first two options. Um, and then we have the always jump option, which with a simple uh, backwards repeat section like this, the always jump option will actually create an infinite loop, which is probably not what you want to do. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend doing that for a backwards repeat bar assignment. However, for endings, um, finale we use the always jump because <laughs> it's a little bit complicated, but if you think about it, it's only going to ever jump when it gets to that bar line. The way that endings work is that you would jump before you get to that bar line the second time. So um, there's no reason to not have that always jump uh, selected. And actually there's other you know, depending on, on the number of uh, endings that you have, it, it's just use more useful to have the always jump uh, when you have endings involved, which we'll get into in the next video. But again, for these simple repeats, play section X number of times is really what you want to do. Again, I'm just, uh, you know, setting up the concepts of this a little bit right now so that it will make it a little bit easier to understand uh, going forward. Um, the target. So again, you know, what happens when you get to this repeat uh, bar line? You're doing this. You're repeating that section. Where's the target? Uh, for a simple repeat like this, the target is the nearest forward repeat, right, which is this thing at four or at the beginning of four. Now, if I had another repeat at the beginning of one, um, it would that's that's what's telling finale not to go back to that first repeat but to go back to the one that's that's closest obviously that makes sense incidentally if you have a situation where you do not have a forward repeat like this is something that you would normally see uh, you don't always need a, a forward repeat bar line at the beginning of a piece finale will interpret this as being or interpret the nearest forward repeat as being the beginning of the piece so uh, that's that's what that does uh, go back here um, and but we do have some other options uh, available to us including the target being the measure number whatever now again not so useful for a backwards repeat but um, for certain things you can have a, a text repeat that says jump to measure X and in this case you'd want the target to be measure number a, a specific measure number so that's why you would use the measure number and then fill in a, a measure number here and then finally the backward option um, this is just telling the finale to cre make a target that's going backwards a certain number of bars instead of finding the nearest forward repeat or the measure number. Um, again, there's some limited uses to this, but when you start getting into the complex repeat structures, there's actually a few cases where it's actually good to use the backward repeat. Just again, just putting all this concept out there so that you can uh, have a leg up going forward. But the way the target backwards X number of measures works is that the value of zero um, actually goes back to the beginning of the measure that the repeat bar exists in. So in this case, uh, if I were to do backwards zero, it's going to the end of bar four and then the beginning of the bar four because uh, technically it's not going backwards any number of bars, it's going back to the beginning of the bar. So it's a little bit uh, semantic like that. If you do backwards one measure, you're going from the end of bar three to the beginning of bar, th uh, sorry, the end of bar four to the beginning of bar three. So 
you're going back two measures. It's a little bit confusing. Backward two measures would go from the end of bar four to the beginning of bar two. So uh, it's just sort of how that works. But again, play section two times, nearest forward repeat. This is a, a basic setup for your backward repeat bar. All right, so anyway, I mean, I know it's a lot of extra information that's not quite handy just yet, but um, hopefully this will be a, a good primer for what's to come because uh, all of these things will become much more evident as we get into more complex structures. Um, but as I said, 99% of the time, right-click, use one of these options, create simple repeat, done and done, and go on your day. Finale will <laughs> play it back correctly, and all is good. So... Um, I think that's it for now. Come back. We're going to start looking at a series of videos having to do with repeat endings, which does get a little bit complicated. So we'll have some fun with that. Um, thanks for watching. My name is Jason Lafredo, and this has been Conquering Finale, the Repeats Redux. And I will see you soon on the next video.